If you've been struggling to create good mixes and getting your dynamic processors and effects to give you the sound that you're looking for, gain staging may be the missing ingredient for your mix process. Now gain staging will allow you to create a solid foundation for the audio levels coming into your mix console and plugins. It will also make the mixing process a lot easier. So what exactly is gain staging? Well, it's essentially making sure that you've got the proper audio level set coming into your mix console as well as the correct levels in and between the different plugins in your effects chain that you may add, uh, like compressors and EQ. And to really understand gain staging, I think it's just best to look at it in action. So within this song, I have three different tracks. Now, these top two are just drum loops that I brought in from the Studio One library. I haven't made any adjustments to these or added, added any effects. And as you can tell by the waveform, these are pretty hot. They were, they were probably normalized to zero dB because we could see that the transients here are pretty much at zero dB. So let's solo this first one here and open up the mix console. And let's just take note of the clipping indicator as well as the levels here on this channel. I'll go ahead and play this back. And we can see that we immediately clip in our mix bus there. We're also heading into the red on this channel. And this is just drums. We haven't added any vocals, any other instruments. So you can only imagine that we're gonna continue to head further into the red uh, and clipping the more that we add to this. Let's switch to this other loop, reset our clipping indicator. And even on these acoustic drums, we're already in the red on our master channel as well as the our uh, console channel. Now let's switch to the synth Reset our clip indicator. Now this one we are not clipping. But again, this is just one instrument, one synth. Once we start to add drums, we immediately clip. And again, once we start to add more instruments, then we're just gonna get a buildup of audio. And this, this is one of the whole reasons why we would use gain staging to help us manage that. Because many of us, uh, when we run into this issue, our first reaction may be to come to the fader and take these levels down. Let's reset the clip indicator. And now we've gotten rid of the clipping here on our mix bus, as well as on our channels. But again, once we start to add more instruments and vocals, this is gonna rise back up and eventually clip, and we're gonna have to keep pulling our faders down further and further near the bottom of our channels. And that's not a good thing. Because if you notice here at the top of our channel, here we have Unity 0 dB, and then here we have minus 6 dB. So near the top, we have really precise and fine control uh, of our adjustments when we want to mix. We have a higher resolution. But as we start to move our faders down, we lose that resolution. So here we have minus 24 dB. And in that same space where we had 5 dB of adjustment, we lose that and it's cut in half because now we go to minus 35 here. So within that same space, we're, we're adjusting 10 dB. We're limited, we're even more limited. So it's not a good place to mix. And if you wanna do things like add automation, it's not gonna be fun to try to add automation, especially if you wanna add precise automation when you're working down here at the bottom of your channel. The other issue with pulling our faders down towards the bottom to get rid of clipping and manage our audio levels is that this does nothing for the signal level coming into the console and how it's gonna affect the plugins that we're using. So a lot of the plugins that we use are going to be affected and their sonic quality is gonna be determined, whether there's distortion, um, is gonna be determined at from the level of the signal coming in to our console. So even though we may have gotten rid of the clipping on our channels and the master channel here by pulling our faders down, this hasn't adjusted the gain level that's coming in from the top of our signal chain here. 
And if you have a hot signal, this is particularly going to be an issue for uh, plugins that emulate hardware because a lot of hardware processors were designed to take a certain signal level and minus 18 dBFS is kind of a standard level that many people will use to gain stage two. And that's normally going to give you the optimal level that's going to go into your plugins, especially uh, plugins that, again, emulate hardware. So then how can we go about gain staging to that minus 18 dBFS level? Well, let's control click and reset these faders back to zero dB. And I'm just going to solo the synth here. And let's play that back from the beginning. Now, if you notice, we have these white horizontal lines, and that's going to give us an RMS reading, which is an average level. It's, it's an average of the audio level that's coming in. If we right click on this, if you're not seeing those, you can click to make that active by being sure you have the check there. I'm going to change the RMS length to 1.8 seconds. So now this is our average level coming in, and we want this to be around minus 18 dBFS. Now, a lot of people will use a VU meter to do this. So I've got a VU meter on this channel. If I double click, then we can see that here. And the scale has been set to that minus 18 that we use on our meter here. And in this way, when we're hovering around an average RMS of minus 18, we're gonna hit zero dB on our VU meter. And the VU meter responds a bit slower to our audio signal, which is gonna give us a better average level. And we have a better view of the average level of our audio. So this is why the VU meter can be useful when you are gain staging. So as long as you have your scale set properly, I believe by default, this VU meter is set to six. So you do need to change this to 18. And what I've done is come to this little paper icon and stored that as a default preset. So whenever I load the VU meter in, then it's automatically gonna be on the 18 scale. So now that this is set properly, we want our incoming signal to our mix console to be at an average level of minus 18 dBFS. There's a couple of different ways that we can make that adjustment. So when I play that back, we can see that we kinda want this to average around zero. And this one's going a little bit high. So if we wanted to take this down a little bit, we could use the clip gain here and just drop that down a little bit. So I'm gonna control click on this handle to take that back to zero dB. And another method that you can use is the gain controls within the console. So if I click on the wrench tool and choose the input controls, then we can see we have gain control here and let's go ahead and play back again. So now I can use the gain control here. To adjust this so that it's averaging zero dB VU, which again, since we've set the scale to 18 is going to be our ideal minus 18 dBFS according to the meter here. Now with drums, this is gonna be a little bit trickier because if we take a look at our acoustic drums, for instance, we can see the transients in this are just, the material is so dynamic, you really, it's gonna be more difficult to set an average level coming in to R0 dB. So let's select that and play this back. So with this, you may want to take the level down a little bit further than normal you'll have to use your own judgment with this. But um, as you can see, we're not clipping on the master channel. If I bring in the synth, we're still not clipping there, although we are close. So your drums, you'd probably want to take down even even more. But the other beautiful thing about this is that our faders are still at the top. So once we 
get that average level correct, then we've got lots of room to move our faders and make the adjustments if we still have clipping, but we don't have to worry about pulling them all the way down to the bottom. And we also have a proper signal coming into any of the effects that we may want to use. Now let's switch over to uh, another song that's a little bit more complicated to this to take a look at. Say maybe you're working with audio stems that you've received or you've rendered down a song that you were working on that had virtual instruments and now you want to begin the mix process and how can you go about gain staging all of these multiple tracks. So one thing that you could do to speed up the process a little bit is click, hold, and drag and select all of these. If you come to the inspector, then at the bottom, you can uh, choose a particular value, say minus 10 or minus 12 dB, and normalize all of these by checking here. So this will normalize the peaks to whatever value that you put here. And this could just be a shortcut to get you started quicker in getting it to that minus 18 dBFS level so that you have to tweak the gain on each of these individually less. But uh, that's one thing that you could do, but I'm gonna control Z and undo that. And let's just come to the mix console and I'm gonna click once to select the first track, hold shift and select the other one. And what I'm gonna do is come to the inserts and let's add a VU meter for all of these. And now what I'm gonna do is just go through these track by track and then adjust so that we're averaging at zero dB VU. And uh, if I go ahead and play this back now, this track, without making any adjustments, then taking a look at the master channel, we can see that we are clipping. Let's come further into the song. So again, we've got some, we're in the red on the mix bus. Here on the individual channels, it looks like we're okay. But what I'm gonna do is just double click on the VU meter and I'm gonna go through the process of taking these down. See our 808 is really up there. I'm gonna use the gain control here. And I'm gonna make these adjustments and then I will be back in a moment. Okay, so I've gone through and quickly made some adjustments to the gains here to try to keep everything around zero dBVU. With the percussion sounds, those are really just quick transients. So those, I just tried to make sure that they didn't go too far into the red and basically went to zero. Now, uh, so let's go ahead and play this back. What I've done here, if this looks different, all I did was click once on the VU and then we can expand a micro view for that VU meter and basically keep an eye on the levels uh, of the gain levels coming in for all of these channels at once. So if you just take note of, notice of these meters, none of them are gonna be spending uh, much time in these higher areas and they'll mostly fluctuate around the zero here. So let's play this back and And if you notice on our massive channel, there's barely any clipping here. It's not nearly like it was before. Now this solo string really needs some compression on its individual channel because it's just all over the place. So, you know, this is a perfect example of as much as you try to gain stage, sometimes, or inevitably, you'll end up still needing to use uh, a compressor on some of your instruments to tame those wild fluctuations. But 
as you can see, we're barely clipping it all. And the beautiful thing about this is all of our faders are up at, at zero dB. They're all at unity. So we have a ton of room to play with here to begin our further mixing. And it's going to be so much easier because we've gain staged to get these audios at a clean and good level. And I do want to come back to that, uh, the solo string that's kind of all over the place and talk about another aspect of the gain staging, particularly in Studio One. When you have an instrument or a vocal that's just all over the place, dynamically speaking, of course, you can still uh, do your gain staging, as we've seen here. But another thing that you can make use of is I'm going to shift a knee to make this larger. Just take notice of these. It's just all over the place. So of course we could use a uh, compressor on this to help tame these peaks, but if you don't want to work your compressor too hard, just right click on this and we can make use of the gain envelope. So now with this active, I can come here and add a point. I can come here and add a point. And then when I hover at the top between these, we get the trim tool and then I can click hold and drag and push that down a little bit. Okay. And then I can come over to, I'm just doing this really quickly and on, on a more broad scale, I would definitely be more precise if you were working on a real mix, but just tame these down a little bit so that you don't have to work your compressor too hard. And take that down a little bit. And now if we come back and take a look at our VU meter, you'll notice this is going to be a lot more stable and we can even come back and gain stage again now that we've cleaned up these peaks a little bit. So let's listen to that. Okay, so it's still a, a bit over the place and would need compression, but it's definitely a lot, lot better than before we went in with the gain envelope and uh, made use of that tool. So again, this could be used on a string instrument like we just saw, or if you have a vocal part that's all over the place and there's really significant differences in the peaks and you have certain words or phrases that are louder, then you may want to go ahead and use the gain envelope and kind of tame those peaks so that you're not going to be working your compressor too much and maybe getting a color or sound that you don't want from it in your mix. Of course, sometimes we do want the character of the compressor, but if you have too extreme differences in dynamics, it may not be what you're looking for. So now we understand about getting a good level coming into our mix console at the very beginning, which is going to make our mix process easier. Another thing to keep in mind is that uh, you need to be mindful of your levels within and in between the plugins that you're using. Let's come up to the top and pull this out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is, so the solo string, we know that it needs some compression. So let's go ahead and add a compressor on there and let's pull that over a little bit. Keeping in mind or being mindful of your levels, let's just say for instance, I'm gonna click, hold and drag to set up a loop here. Let's press forward slash to make that active. And let's just say I squash this. Take the threshold down. And I'm just doing this extreme so you can get an idea of uh, what I'm talking about as far as levels is concerned. So when we look at this, we can see and hear that it's being reduced a lot. So we've lost some of the gain on this. So if you are, and we don't need to be so extreme, making adjustments, particularly with the compressor, then you do need to add back what you've removed. So if we 
bypass this. Let's squash it some more. Okay, so this is a good thing to do. Um, if you want to check how much the compressor, for instance, is making to the gain, we can see the reduction here, but you can turn the bypass on and off, and then you'll want to be sure that you increase the makeup gain. So, Okay, about minus 15, minus 16 of reduction. So we want to take the makeup. And this one is going to be a little bit difficult to do because there's such a drastic difference. But you want to have as least amount of difference in gain or volume when you bypass your compressor. You don't want to have a significant difference. So that's just another area to be mindful of when you're thinking about your gain structure. Because if you do a lot of compression and you're losing gain, but then you have more effects further down the chain after your compressor, then depending on what they are, their character and tone uh, could be affected by that, or most likely will be affected by that drop in uh, gain leaving the compressor after you've made your adjustments. If you don't go ahead and make up that gain that you're reducing. So just another area to be mindful of that can affect your mix and your gain structure. Okay. And so I think that we will wrap up here. This has gone on a little bit longer than I had originally uh, planned, but I hope that you got some useful information out of here and I hope that your, this will help out your mixes in the future. If you are someone who is working in a different doll and you don't have the VU meters, I'll leave a couple of links to free VU meters that you can uh, find online. And other than that, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.